Hi there, come on in. We finally have some winter weather which sets the stage for ice fishing at Tip Up Town USA Houghton Lake this weekend. We're gonna be there for an ice fishing story, but this week we have prepared a psych up show for you walleye anglers. Last July, we wanted to learn walleye fishing techniques from a pro, I mean a real pro. So we took Mark Martin to Gunasail Lake in Northern Manitoba. We challenged him to catch walleye during the day and teach us how to do it. Well, he did, and we're going to teach you, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time to learn about walleye on Michigan Outdoors. It's a walleye. It's a big walleye. Oh, it's a big walleye. Look at the size of that walleye. Holy nice. cow. Early spring, ice out. This is the time to catch northern pike and walleye in most lakes. Not only are we fishing at the prime time of the year, we're on Gunasail Lake that has very little fishing pressure. The walleye come easy and they're big. Oh, it is? It's a big walleye. This will be, this will be my biggest walleye ever. I shouldn't have said that. Oh. Can I take it back? No. <laughs> take it back. <laughs> at Ice Out, anybody can catch walleye. Oh, 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 oh. So cold. Gunasail Lake has been famous for its trophies, but even this lake in northern Manitoba has its problems later in the summer. Since Jim and Brendan Budd from Mason bought this lodge a few years ago, nobody had caught a trophy walleye after June 30th. The big ones seemed to disappear. July and August at this lodge had far fewer guests. Nobody knew where the big walleye were, except maybe the loons, and they weren't talking in a language anybody could understand. That's why we flew in with Captain Mark Martin, a walleye king in Michigan. He brought a depth flasher, some live bait, and a lifetime of knowledge. Yeah, we're at 31 feet right now. We're gonna come back up into 20 here and follow that around. There's some fish right there on the bottom. I seen a couple pretty decent sized fish down there. There's a lot of nice eating sized fish uh, further up the shelf though right here. And right now just kind of trying to get the jig down there to, there. there's some fish right there just on, off the of bottom right there in 25, 24, see them all right there? Yeah. They're just hovering right there. Got them. We were surprised. This fishing trip was only 15 minutes old and Mark had his second walleye. Yeah, it's definitely a, a better fish. Probably a, a good trophy one, maybe even. You know, I'll swing them around on this side. This is a good fish. Is it? Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> a lot better than that other one. Mark was fishing a spot that few people had ever tried. Could be a northern. It's a walleye, it's a big, oh, it's a big walleye. Look at the size of that walleye. Holy nice. cow. <laughs> That's a good walleye. <laughs> <laughs> this is I, 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 Can I net it? Go where you need to go. Oh, that, if you want to, sure. Yeah, sure, Brandon, you can net it. Brendan Budd was almost speechless. After June 30th, he had never netted a walleye over 28 inches from this lake. He's been down there in the... He's been down in the rocks. That's a, that's probably a nine pounder or so, isn't it? How could Mark Good Martin nine. find and catch a fish like this so fast? That's not a, that's not a bad fish for <laughs> what we've been. It's a uh, second fish in uh, about, oh, 15 minutes of fishing and we're not even fishing the real good spots. That's a dandy. I've seen Mark do this kind of thing before on Strange Waters, and he said he'd teach us how. It's 31 inches long. Is it really? Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll release them back into the water here and uh, as careful as we can. For trophies we don't want to have mounted, we try to hold them gently and release them unharmed. Turn it revive him a little bit and get some water flowing through his gills. I know it looks like we're nuts letting a big one like this go, 
but these are the valuable breeding walleye, and we'll catch more. We keep smaller ones under three pounds. Those are the ones we like to eat for sure lunch. I'll just... If you think he can stand it, I'll... There he goes. Just had a baby him a little bit. <laughs> Have to be careful with those special resources. They're valuable. Yeah, it's 31. 31, what's that? Is that your first walleye? No, that's my second one. Okay, we've caught about four, I think. You know, some eaters. How did you do that? How did I get that one? Yes, that one. Well, I was back trolling along and I just got through uh, telling John, I said, there's some big ones down there, didn't I, John? Yep. And I said, it, well, watching the flash and being able to tell that they were right there and I just back trolled into the wind and just kept kicking it out of gear and just working the, the, the twister tail along the bottom, but just keeping it off and all of a sudden I just felt them hit it and just kind of let them hold on for a second and set the hook. And I thought for a second it might even be a northern because I didn't really you know, expect uh, to get a nice walleye that quick during the trip. <laughs> Well, this was walleye lesson number one from Mark Martin, who won the Cabela's World Walleye Championship in 1990. He's not bothered by wet or windy weather. He said we could catch walleye anytime. What Mark was looking for with his flasher was underwater islands or reefs that were about 15 feet below the surface, and he wanted deep water around these islands. He said that's where the walleye stayed later in the summer. If you back troll down to where they are, you'll catch them. Yeah, uh, there's a reef that just came up out of 50-some uh, foot of water right here. And uh, there's some fish down here on it I see around this edge. I'm going to try, try to find the high spot right here, and then we're going to drop a buoy marker on it. And... Yeah, here it comes right up right now. It's coming right up out of 50-some foot. We're up to 27 feet right now. Keep circling here a little bit at a time until we try to find the, here it comes. It's coming up. We're up to about 21 and a half feet right here. There's fish all over the top of here too. There's some nice fish right there, right there. About 27 feet? No, about 21 and a half right here. 20 feet, 19. We'll find some somewhere close to about 15 and put uh, a marker over. Man, there are a lot of nice fish right here. We set buoys on sunken islands so we can find them again easily. The fish were always there. We got it sitting in about 12 feet of water right there with 50 foot all the way around and it tapers off. Mark Martin was the first person to use a flasher on this lake. Nobody knew about the secrets of the sunken islands. Here it comes. Oh! Oh, it's nice a big, walleye. Whoa, it is a good there, walleye. Yeah. <laughs> Grab them for you. Oh, I don't know. What do you think, John? I would. Grab okay, that. Well, you can grab them and throw them back. I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I want to get to, get to see it first. Well, I do have the net here. This is here we are. Oh, you got That's a good size walleye. That's a nice walleye. It is. Did he get you? He came no, right no, but the hook came right out. Well, that's a good one. Can't complain about this. Now this is this is a, a whole stretch of water down here for a mile or two that nobody's ever fished and it's right next to the lodge. Nobody ever fished next to the lodge in the summer, but those walleye had been there all around the sunken islands. Yeah, that's a nice walleye. Not a shabby walleye at all. The trick to finding these walleye was using a flasher. In the summer, they like certain places you can only see with sonar. Boy, they're in here. Oh, Oops, here, let me shut this thing off here a little. Ooh, that's a nice walleye. Yep. Yes, it is. Ooh. Oh! They're in a little shallower here. I just picked one up while you were reeling in. Did you? Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. 
And the barbed wire comes right out. Ooh, this is a nice one. I want to see how long this is. This is a nice fish here, too. <laughs> a real nice fish. Where at? I got one on Mark right has here. one. So you just say you want something to eat, and then you get yep. into the nice ones. Yeah, well, this one. <laughs> This one, Mark, is 25 inches. That one's 25. Too big. Too big. Too big. It has to be a 22 or less for shore launch. All the fish <laughs> this size, 22 to 28 inches, have to go back. Can't keep them. No problem. No. So you got one in, and I'll send one on its way. That one looks to be maybe 23, 24. 20, yeah, I'd say 23, 20. Nice. 23. Yeah, let's see what we got here. No, it's over, it's a little over 22, so. Yeah. It's gotta go back. Yeah, it's too nice of a fish. Yeah. Took it too long to get this far. That's a Isn't nice that one. funny, we, we just decided to start saving fish for shore lunch, catching them too big. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're going for we're going, going for shore lunch, and here goes this one back for his lunch. There he goes. Mark Martin cracked the secret. It wasn't how we fished, it was where we fished that made the difference. He taught us how to use a flasher to locate sunken islands where the summer walleye hung out. And they like live bait, crawlers or leeches. They'll make any lure work better. Back troll with the motor in reverse going against the wind for maximum boat control. And to maintain good fishing like this for years ahead, keep the eaters, but release those big spawners. It's only practical. Remember at Ice Out when cameraman John Ford caught that 29 and a half incher and we all thought he was crazy for not having it mounted? He figured he'd catch a bigger one, but he didn't on that trip. In July though, he followed Mark Martin's advice and I had to grab the camera once again. Drop them down. I, I can grab them. A little time. tense, I think. Uh, do you think we should He's get a net at this point? Boy, it'd be a shame if he loses this one. Any bets? Let's summarize the principle here by looking at this map again. Uh, this is a typical walleye holding area. I don't care if you're in Manitoba, at Gunaseo Lake, or in, in an inland lake in Michigan. The walleye like to get towards deeper water, but you're not going to find them out in the deep stuff. They're not lake trout. They're not going to be 100 feet down. They like to hug these sunken islands, and we, you'll often find them on the shelves that are maybe 20 or 30 feet down. The sunken island should be about 15 feet from the surface, and if it's a big plateau, the bigger the better, because that's where the bait fish lie, and that's where these walleye move up to feed. Now, we didn't find the walleye on these plateaus. We found them all around the edges. The key to find these is using a flasher. Um, you could use a graph, but the walleye pros, Mark Martin says all the pros, including himself, use a flasher, not a graph. That's a subject of a story in itself. We also have walleye tips coming up, different rigs and how to use them on a future show. But right now, let's take a look at some big honking walleye in our trophy book. Eleven and a half pounds. This 29 and a half inch walleye came from Little Bay de Noc. Daryl Peltier from Rapid River caught it last January on a rocker minnow. Mike Corbett from Saginaw got his 11-pounder from the Saginaw River on a riba jig. Bob O'Dell from Saginaw used a Swedish pimple through the ice on the Saginaw River. Another January walleye, it weighed 10 and a half pounds. Now this walleye looks like it's going to burst, full of eggs, a big spawner. Ron Specht from Reese took it on a jig and minnow from Saginaw Bay that was 31 inches long. This yellow perch is in the walleye family. It sure looks small after seeing those big walleye, but this perch was one and three quarter pounds, 14 inches long for a perch that's big. Richard Wood from Gron caught it ice fishing the Boardman Lake in Grand Traverse County. 14 year old Adam Jacobson from Rockford wearing his outdoors club hat is holding a 14 and three eighths inch crappie he caught on a minnow from Bostwick Lake in Kent County in January. Scott Hayward from Rockford caught several from the same lake. The biggest was 15 inches. 
Not only did Dean Arnold from Belmont send us a great picture of the 36-pound muskie he caught from Intermediate Lake in Antrim County in September, but he has a great story to tell about this 51 and a half incher. Now, when this baby hit, I thought I was in a big patch of weeds. <laughs> oh, you mean it was just kind of... Yeah, a... yeah my bait just stopped, and I was going to rip it through the weeds, and I guess I really socked it to him because he couldn't get the hooks out. Did he fight a lot? Not really. Just kind of slogged his way back to the boat and hmm. saw the boat, made one short run toward the deep water and uh, circled around under the boat and then he came out and up and we were ready for him with the net. With the net. Yep. Well, that's great. This fish turned out to be 36 pounds, 51 and a half inches long. That's, you know, they don't get much longer than that. One little side light. The guy I was fishing with is a dentist. And the first thing he did was to check for cavities. I bet he did. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to catch a fish like this? Dean Arnold did, and he's our Michigan Outdoors Trophy Muskie Angler of the Week. Now, sit back, we have a couple of phenomenal recipes. Uh, we dropped one from the show during, during our deer hunting coverage, so we have to make up one this month. So we're going to have two of them, starting off with this one. Oh, it's terrific. We have a terrific recipe from Wayne Rush called Cheesy Sloppy Joes. And it's actually just a basic Sloppy Joe recipe with uh, cheese added to it is what it is. Well, hey, of course, we make it with venison here right. on Michigan Outdoors. Right, of course we do. Going to just go ahead and fry this. Now, like I say, it's just a basic um, Sloppy Joe recipe. you got your onions and then your ingredients of mustard and uh, ketchup. And, and it mm. does call for just a little bit of sugar. And that will kind of counteract the mustard just a little bit. And then chicken gumbo, which Well, this was, isn't a normal well, sloppy joe recipe. Nobody <laughs> sure. puts chicken gumbo soup in their <laughs> right. sloppy joes. And then a little bit of salt and pepper. Chicken and then, gumbo soup. Yep, and then just let that heat up. And uh, add a little bit of cayenne pepper. Now, here you could adjust it, of Put course. Put a big glob of it, huh? Right. Add You're, you more. aiming at somebody with that? <laughs> yeah, well, I do stir it up. Oh, See, it, okay. it all gets mixed up. And then, um, of course, the cheese at the very end, because you don't want it ah. to break right down. So that just goes in until it melts and then goes on a bun. This one lives up to its name. It's uh, certainly cheesy and it's certainly a sloppy joe, but it does taste pretty good. Pretty it definitely good. Tastes, it tastes excellent. <laughs> it tastes very excellent because my darling wife makes <laughs> the greatest sloppy joes going, and she just fed me some the other night. They were great. It's good to have a change. <laughs> It really is. Well, how do they compare with the with the cheesy sloppy joes? Well, I'm going to suggest to her that she tries this recipe. I think this, this is recipe. Sure would really like. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think she would, mm -hmm. and um, I think, in fact, everybody would mm -hmm. would like it. Mm -hmm. The popularity of cheese nowadays, and cheeseburgers, right. and cheese whiz, and right. cheese chips, and nachos, and all that. It's got to be an easy recipe to do. It's very, mm -hmm. very yeah. easy. Very few ingredients, and yes, exactly. Mm. Yep. You got a winner here, mm -hmm. a winner here, and, and the venison comes through too. Oh, definitely. Yep. And hey, top drawer. Good, good Saturday afternoon watching the TV sandwich. There you go. I have a guarantee for that recipe. I guarantee if you don't like it, send your leftovers to me and I'll eat them all. It's outstanding. Now we have a classic recipe we want to show you, one that won our Fish and Wild Game contest a few years ago, one of my all-time favorites for venison loaf. Jean Leonard sent us a recipe for stuffed venison loaf that was a <laughs> winner in our recipe contest. And you know, you wouldn't guess that something as, as bland Blaced and ordinary basic, that's right. as meatloaf. But of course, she starts off tossing potato chips, chips. in. <laughs> that's different. Get your celery and onions. You're going to go ahead and mix up your just regular mixture like you would for meatloaf. And then this has got the croutons in it that you use in a stuffing mix. And you're going to add your butter and water to this. Now, since we've done this recipe, I have tried this with the um, stovetop stuffing, mm -hmm. and it's not nearly as good huh. as it is this way. This stays just a little bit drier, and it is better. Man. Then, you, you know, we're going to wrap <laughs> stuffing in burger. Inside of it. And win a contest with it. This is and incredible. And it does work. And it stays moist that way. I think that the stuffing keeps the uh, burger yeah, from drying it out. Mm -hmm. It would. The trick with venison burger is really don't worry so much about putting fat in it, but make sure you have the venison fat primarily out Removed. of it. Removed. Especially the connective tissue. Right. Too many people take that venison burger, uh, you know, to a butcher and have them grind everything and up. And it does make a difference. That's a mistake. But this venison burger, quality stuff, wrapped around the stuffing. It's a meal in one. Can you imagine how many people wished right now they were in Bob Garner's shoes? 
it's a good moist meatloaf. You know, you can't really you can't really beat it. I'm not really nuts about meatloaves, but if you but if you put in the stuffy mix, mm -hmm. it's this is, is really nice. You're not nuts about meatloaf. No. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> Knowing no. you all these years, seeing you eat all these recipes, I can't believe that. Well, what I'm saying is, is that when it gets to meatloaf recipes, they're all fairly basic. You've probably and eaten a lot of them. I've eaten a lot of meatloaf <laughs> recipes. I mean, who didn't? Jesus, when we grew up, hamburger was a staple. Yeah. And 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 so then you get to a recipe like this, though. It's got stuffing in it. It's a lot more moist. Change you know, your horseradish. Meal in one. This horseradish and the. And the ketchup, I think, is great. Yeah, just about any kind of topping, mm -hmm. it won't hurt it at all. Oh, I put cocktail sauce on, on mine. It's about mm. the same thing. It's really good. This is old horseradish, so you can use a lot. <laughs> hey, can you imagine, too, the next day having a slice of this between maybe two slices Rye of bread. homemade, yeah. homemade I bread? I knew <laughs> he loved meatloaf. And this is a great recipe. <laughs> Both of these extremely scrumptious venison recipes that you saw on tonight's show are in the December-January issue of our Outdoor Digest magazine. The address, if you don't have a copy, address is coming up at the end of this program. Now, if you'd like to get into some ice fishing, well, it's easier for me to direct you to ice at least. I don't know about the fish. We do have ice throughout the state, enough fishable ice in most areas, but the fishing, well, it's been a little bit tougher. Cat Coho Bob says they're getting, oh, 25 to 30 perch per person around Pentwater, 6 to 11 inches, uh, one steelhead per angler at Hart Dam. Captain Emil Dean says on the Manistee, his customers have been getting one to two per trip per person, six to ten pounders. For ice fishing on the east side of the state, four to eight inches of ice in Tawas Bay, uh, possibly 12 inches of ice up here in the Alpena area. Been getting some pan fish at Fletcher's Floodwaters, but nothing to write home about, they say. More fishing action is in the Upper Peninsula. Manuskong Bay has a foot of ice, getting walleye up to five pounds, perch up to ten inches, and a couple pike. We do have some good fishing over here in Bay Danak as well, 2 to 10 inches of ice, depending on where you fish. If you fish the shallower water, 5 to 10 feet, you're going to catch smaller perch, but they've been getting limit catches. 20 to 25 feet of water, they've been getting perch up to 12 inches, been getting pike limits on tip-ups up to 30 inches. Western end of the UP, lots of snow, anywhere from a foot and a half to two feet of snow. Uh, Lake Gogivik, anglers have been getting one walleye, but they've been big, 6 to 8 pounds. 12 to 14 inches of ice. Dick Blau says they're getting two to three walleye in Portage Lake, 18 to 19 inches. Snowmobile trails in excellent conditions in the western UP. Of course, the Lower Peninsula, ice, and we're waiting for snow around Tip-Up Town. We know there's plenty of ice, eight to, teen inch, eight to 10 inches in Houghton Lake. According uh, to the sources up there, the conditions are right. We hope this weekend we can catch some fish. We'll be there at Tip-Up Town with our cameras. Maybe we'll see you there. If we don't, get outdoors this weekend. It's a great place to be, and we'll see you right here next week. Next week on Michigan Outdoors, we'll bring you the first weekend of Tip-Up Town at Houghton Lake. Now, my broken leg isn't totally healed. I'll be hobbling around with a cane, but I'll be out there ice fishing along with Kathy Beitler and our camera crew, John Ford and Abby Burke. Our Tip-Up Town report next week, right here on Public TV. All right. That's a nice one. Nice going, David.